I don't like this. You thought, eyeing the number of men that surrounded yourself, Shinso, and the agents you were both hired to protect. An exchange was to be made for a contraband infamous in this area of Esuha City, the seedier side of it, and you were invited to tag along as a bodyguard to the event. As an interrogator, you weren't a stranger to criminal activity, but you also had your conditions. The commission asked for your unique quirk to aid the agent, on the proviso that any information you could collectively harness would be entitled to the commission alone. You agreed, on the proviso that you brought two friends along. Shinso, dressed in suit and tie with his scarf wrapped loosely around his shoulders, stood next to you, his eyes glancing in your direction while you held on to Toka, stroking her black fur comfortably in your arms. Me too, responded Shinso in your mind. Too many of them for just a simple deal. Unless the deal isn't all that simple, you added, Toka's deep purring reverberating in your arms. These men, they're actually frightened. Shinzo gazed around the room, glancing at each pair of eyes, their menacing glares glued on the three of you while the agent continued his way towards a large, stocky man ahead. What you had relayed seemed contradictory to the situation, but a nervous twitch or a hesitant tick from a few of the men demonstrated your statement. If anything, they know who you are, you continued. Your presence has them spooked, and I was counting on that. I'm just a glorified bodyguard. No, you're the pro-hero that got hired for the commission's work. They know that. So, uh, why Toka then? To make me look a little intimidating. Your lighthearted tone gave Shinso a smirk to himself not knowing that the gesture had caused a few men to bite their inner lip in anxiousness. You caught a few thoughts from the group. Their suspicions, their fears, but nothing about the exchange at this point. It gauged that the intel you needed to garner was not shared amongst the greater crowd, something that the commission and most organized crime had in common, you thought. Eventually, the agent approached the stocky tall man, standing by a set of double doors with an intimidating sledgehammer by his side. Both Shinso and yourself stared at the weapon, cautious and wary, before the agent lifted his suitcase towards the man. We've got the goods, he announced. Let your man know we want no trouble. The man grunted. His heavy footfalls shook the room as he stood aside using his large hand to push the doors open into the dark. Cheers. Thanked the agent before heading into the dark, turning back to the both of you with a nod of his head to follow. You glanced at Shinso as he did to you before the both of you followed in single file, Shinso allowing you to enter first. The corridor was dimly lit with incandescent lights that strung across the ceiling, realizing that it led you all into a cluttered basement area, weaving past shelves and boxes lazily strewn around. Great. More walking. It was a bit excessive, you thought, but as far as any intel you were given, the first wave wouldn't have a problem dealing with any trouble should they be signaled to storm the den. Unfortunately, the commission refused for you to meet with any other heroes who were involved in this simple exchange. You began to wonder if anyone outside of yourself and Shinso knew what was happening. Eventually, all three of you reached your destination heavily lit in strong overhead lights. A rotund man dressed smartly in a suit that seemed a size too small for his belly in the center of the room, while two men stood beside him, complete with tattooed arm sleeves and hair gels so slick it sheened in the light. Huh, did you bring the cash? Spoke the large man while he pulled on the collar of his blazer, 
a sense of entitlement reeking from his boisterous stance. He watched as the agent revealed the large suitcase he had been carrying, swiftly opening it to show off the printed bills that lined its contents. Do you have the salve? Asked the agent in kind, before he locked the suitcase away. The rotund man, whom you assumed may have been the linchpin, or at least the owner of the den, signaled for one of his men to take out, from his coat pocket, a large tin container, unscrewing the lid of it to reveal a waxy substance inside. There was a glow to it, but you couldn't quite tell what this contraband was. Again, another unfortunate detail you were not privy to upon being enlisted on this sting. The agent turned to you, signaling for you to step forward. Glancing at Shinso, you gently handed Toka to him, slipping a note as well that you had pre-made before walking into this den. One look into Shinzo's eyes was all he needed. You didn't need to tell him otherwise. You made your way towards a large thug, hesitantly gliding a finger atop the salve, feeling its smooth glaze and texture between your fingers. Wax was the right descriptor, but the glow faded upon your touch. Despite not being told of exactly what it was, you had at least been given information about its properties. A salve to aid in enhancing quirk capabilities. Any other information or sources about the salve without any physical evidence was at this time kept at a minimum, until the commission had a specimen to understand the nature of it. You glanced up at the tall man, concentrating while you still rubbed your fingers together, feeling out the texture of the salve. The cloud appeared again in your mind's eye, revealing keywords that struck out the most in clarity in his head. Damn, this thing is dangerous. It started. Take it already. What are you waiting for? Fear. That's all you garnered before you made your way towards the minds of the other two, slowly taking the tin and the lid from the thug. What's taking them so long? Spoke the other thug in your head while you screwed the lid back onto the tin. I've got better things to do, like rip the pro hero's head off. Those words you will relay soon enough. You began to walk backwards, holding onto the tin in place, before the words of the linchpin entered your thoughts, the strongest of them causing you to be wary. Just a little longer, he spoke in your head. The general will be pleased. This is the greatest bait and switch, if I do say so myself. You backed towards the agent gently grabbing onto his arm with a firmness in your grip. A moment of silence passed, causing the men to stare slightly perplexed at your sudden realization. Well, now you've got the salve, stated the rotund man with his hand still gripping at his blazer. Now the cash. The agent turned to the men keeping the suitcase close on his person before he glared at them. Sorry, request denied, he announced, while he took the salve away from you. Prove to us this isn't a fake. <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> you take me for a cheat? Retorted the rotund man with a jovial laugh. Whatever happened to honor among thieves? Hmm, I'm not a thief. Are these the goods or not? A bead of sweat began to run down the temples of the linchpin, while his thoughts grew manic. You could see them clear as day in this dimly lit room. God damn it! No, the general can't know about this blunder! But that pro hero. You watched his eyes drift onto Shinso, the beads of sweat multiplying on his brow. His mind suddenly went blank 
as if static replaced the string of thoughts that were racing through that highway of a brain. His breath escaped his lungs, falling to his knees, before a bloom of red could be seen on his immaculate white blazer, struck by a needle. Your eyes widened, catching stray words elsewhere from the room, faint but enough for you to grab the agent and push him to the ground. Shinso immediately did the same, before a spray of needles shot from an undisclosed location in the shadows. The two thugs, unaware, were struck by them, their bodies falling to the floor. Go, Toka, whispered Shinso, releasing the black cat from his arms. Get outside. Toka immediately scurried away, her tiny form disappearing into the dark while you checked on the agent. You okay, sir? You asked. <sighs> Fine, thanks. He replied before he checked the tin in hand. You sure this is a fake? You can't be too sure. They weren't specific, but it looks like a double cross. All three of you eyed the room, with all three men lifeless on the ground. The sound of footsteps echoed in the room before you spotted a fleeting shadow leave through a door in the far corner. Go after them. Ugh instructed the agent. They may know something. Of course, let the hero and the contractor do the dirty work. You sighed before glancing at Shinso, receiving a nod from him, ready to go. The both of you quickly rushed to your feet, chasing after the villain while leaving the agent to his devices back in the room. You soon learned that this basement was a set of rooms, each one growing larger than the last. Questions brewed in your mind about the structural integrity of this den, and who even built this storage place in the first place. You soon made your way to a room akin to a warehouse, filled to the brim with boxes of what you assumed were illegal goods. You scanned the room, feeling out for any stray thoughts but caught nothing amongst the mess. You okay? spoke Shinso next to you. Yeah, never better. You replied. Did you get a look at the guy? No, but they're quick, I'll tell you that. I'll take the high ground. And I stay low. You finished with a small smile. Got it. With that, the both of you went your separate ways. Shinso making his way to a platform that overlooked the entire floor. Meanwhile, you traverse through the shelves and boxes, keeping your step as light as possible. Your mind began to wander, still feeling out for any stray thoughts that you could catch. It was difficult when you had no visual of the target, a few faint words here or there, but nothing concrete to pinpoint where their location was. The sound of footsteps echoed around the room, most likely from Shinso but you did your best to focus on any sound of movement on your level. The shuffling of boxes ahead caught you off guard before you rounded a corner, finding no one. It was quiet. Just a little closer. In a short second, you glanced upwards to find someone hovering between the tall shelves, the glint of their blade plummeting towards you before you rolled away. The assailant continued their attack without pause, swiping their dagger and what looked like a cane edging closer with every swing. You bumped into the boxes, dodging and weaving through before you stepped aside from the thrust of their blade, utilizing their momentum to grab a hold of their arm and push them back. A tactic you've learned in self-defense. Too bad the assailant quickly readjusted, slipping their cane between the both of you to twist you into their hold, locking you in place before holding the dagger to your throat. Hey! Yelled Shinso from above before he jumped towards the ground floor, his hands on his scarf, outstretched. He inspected the assailant, their clothes, their eyes, that face mask. They were not like the men earlier, nor the ones who were involved in the exchange. 
The stranger stared at Shinso, inspecting him as well. Recognizing the scarf on his person before pushing the blade into your throat. It is you. You spouted, catching Shinso off guard. You're the dark horse everyone keeps talking about. You shouldn't be here. <gasps> you swallowed while the blade still pressed against your skin peering back at Shinso with a knowing look. I know your quirk, and you won't get a word out of me. Let them go, ordered Shinso calmly. You think I'm that naive? You continued. I came here for one job, and it's done. Let me go, and we can forget this ever happened. Shinzo glared at the stranger with their intense gaze, not once letting their sights off of him. They were still, calm, as if this was a normal routine. Shinzo garnered that this was not new to them. Were you ordered to assassinate everyone in that room? He asked. Not everyone. You answered. Only those that didn't follow orders. And I followed mine to a T. But I question your place in the world. With every word you spoke, Shinzo watched the eyes of the assassin react to certain words, fully realizing the intent behind them. Your talents are being wasted. You continued, your eyes tearing a little. Why spend your efforts on a failed society when you can reap the rewards on something far greater? Your voice choked on the words before the prick of the blade broke your skin. Hitching your words, Shinso watched a spot of red trail from your throat. You don't need anything else. You can have all you want, all that you desire. No need to Bow down to the whims of some good-for-nothings who will only drain you of your life. The pained expression in your face, though you try to hide it, pained Shinso. Whatever words you spoke as a conduit were not true to you. In fact, they were an insult to your integrity and to Shinso's, you believed, while the dagger still pressed into your now open skin. Lofty words for someone who seems like a dog, retorted Shinso. The eyes of the assassin almost smiled at the remark before they righted themselves, who seeing the blade from your throat, if only a fraction. <sighs> Sticks and stones, you replied. But it's the truth. I do work for someone. Somebody that I truly care about who wants nothing more than to continue the work he had started. He was robbed, and I intend to claim back what rightfully belongs to him. You felt an ounce of relief from the blade, glancing towards the assassin behind you as best as you could. Is he the general? You asked out of turn, catching Shinso's attention to the term itself. No. You simply answered. I'll say it again. Let. Them. Go. Ordered Shinso, a growl undermining his tone. The assassin's eyes almost sparkled at the sound of his tone, grabbing your frame and backing away from Shinso with you in tow. He slowly followed each step, not once letting the distance between him and you grow further. So... Is this your reason? You spoke again. Not for society, or for the greater good, just for this one person? You squeaked, the last words out, when the blade pressed against your skin again, your blood smearing against it. I said, let them go, repeated Shinso, for what he felt like the umpteenth time. Sorry. But you're not in control of this situation. I am. You replied, while rounding the corner of a shelf. 
Shinsu refused to lose sight of you, keeping pace with the assassin who slowly made their way towards the exit. You're no different to everyone else. You have selfish reasons to be who you are. The idea of being a hero, to save others, to win the day, for the fame and glory. It's all bullshit. It's all fanfare. At least I can see that you're truly a selfish man. A wolf and his little lamb. Shut up! Reprimanded Shinso, gripping his scarf. You agree with me, right? You asked, unbelieving the words that you spoke. You could do so much good if you only changed the way everyone thinks. You have so much potential. And the way society views you doesn't hold a candle to your greatness. <laughs> Reconsider that when you go charging in on someone else's whim. And you're not any better, he replied, his eyes staring at the assassins. Taking orders from somebody else. How are you different? Sorry, hero. I love doing what I do. I have a purpose to fulfill. He has given that to me and I will go to any lengths to fulfill them. Unlike the commission who do nothing to reward you and only induct you into these petty little things for their own gain. After all, are you loyal to them? Shinzo glared at the assassin, but something deep inside connected with those words. Was he loyal to the commission? In the overall climate, they're just an organizational body. An arm of the law, if you will. <laughs> I'll take that silence under advisement. You choked before Shinso noticed another door behind the assassin. Most likely the exit from the storage room. For the last time, let them go he ordered with a growl the assassin's eyes smiled from behind the face mask while your eyes widened in fear staring into shinso's suddenly a rumble shook the room causing the assassin to release you from their grip from the shock you turned to push them away receiving a gash on your arm from their dagger before the shelves and boxes shook and rocked. Unable to keep yourself balanced, you tripped into Shinzo's arms, catching you from behind. He watched as the assassin took flight, running for the exit before the roof began to cave in. Shinzo immediately took hold of your hand, pulling you towards one of the many platforms to take shelter under from the falling debris and the toppling boxes. Kneeling in a small crevice, he held you close, his body shielding you from any harm while one shell fell from above, crashing into the platform that was your only sanctum from the cave-in. Eventually, the tremors stopped, leaving Shinso and yourself pinned behind a fallen shelf and now broken goods. Hitoshi, shh, 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 shh. he hushed before inspecting the wound on your neck and arm. The gash wasn't too deep to his relief, but you were still badly injured. He took his blazer off, using it as a makeshift wrap around your arm to try and stave off the bleeding. <sighs> Let's get out of this dump, he spoke with spite. He inspected the fallen shelf, wondering if he would be able to push it out of the way to squeeze through before he heaved his body into it, the sound of metal bending from the weight of it. They're wrong, you know. You stated, watching Shinso's back while he tried to push. It hurt me so much to say it. But please don't let their words get to you. I won't. He replied before he allowed the shelf to fall back in place. They knew our quirks beforehand. But you got a sense of them through that, right? <sighs> yeah. It's not pretty. You sighed, still watching his back heave into the shelf. How much do you know about the Tartarus prison break? 
Only that one villain escaped. <laughs> the sudden realization hit Shinso before he turned back onto you, immediately checking your wounds for any signs of puncture wounds, checking each part of your body the assassin had held you. Hitoshi, I'm, I'm fine. You quickly reassured, firmly grabbing onto his wrists. No needles. They needed me to talk to you anyway. Relieved, Shinsu laid his forehead against yours, the closeness comforting your wary mind after such an ordeal. Using your quirk for long periods of time took a toll on you mentally. Keeping up with so many voices could strain even the best organized minds. You felt that once you saw daylight, you were going to hide away for a while. Surprisingly, they had one thing left to say. You continued, pulling away to look into Shinzo's eyes. They said we were lucky to have each other. And not to squander that. If that's a threat, we'll make sure of it, commented Shinso before he pulled away from you. No, think you could help me out, kitten. <laughs> uh. You giggled before you stood to your feet, following him towards the fallen shelf. With a look between the both of you, you both heaved the shelf creaking ever so slightly with the weight of both of you pushing against it. <coughs> to no avail, neither of you were able to budge it together, but just enough for Toka to notice your whereabouts. <coughs> 